It was like I had this little girl in uh, grade five girl and uh, and she was singing for me, you know, just with, with a few kids in the room and uh, beautiful voice. And mm. I said, uh, does mum sing? No, mum's not alive. I went, oh, okay. Um, what about dad? I said, oh, I don't see dad. And um, where's mum? Oh, she died of cancer two years ago. Now, if I had just let myself go, I would have been a mess, you know, because yeah. I was so feeling for her emotions, yeah. uh, and I still do. Yeah. What, what am I looking at now? What, what in me? Because I don't, my mother didn't die of cancer. Why, what emotion in me triggers that? Do, do I have to pay attention to that? Yeah, yes. well, it's very obvious if, if you remember our previous private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> And that is that you have not really ever experienced from your mother a true feeling of love. She, you believe you have, but there's a feeling in your soul that says, no, I haven't. There's, that, that's uh, my column, my... there's one of my column Bs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and this is one reason why you have uh, what you believe is closer relationships with women than men. But, but the, that feeling gets triggered every time uh, somebody, and even this is your law of attraction even, the, the law of attraction through your question has exposed the condition inside of you in the sense that, oh, I've got grief about not having a mother. Does that make sense? Mm. About not missing feeling and love. missing a mother's love. Mm. Basically, that's the feeling she had and that's the feeling you have inside mm. of you even though you don't allow yourself to experience it. Mm. But this <coughs> is the beautiful thing about the law of attraction that God has made is it brings you events yeah. saying, this is an issue for you because you see a bit of emotion came up then when she said that and that's showing you that there's got to be something deeper here um, and this is a beautiful but I, thing you know, I, I would just say, oh, that's just because I empathise. You know? I'm sensitive to how mm. that kid would feel. You know, Whereas to... if, you, if you're free of grief, mm. you'll definitely feel for that little girl mm. and say, wow, you know. And actually you'll be more capable to help her with the emotion. You say, mm. how do you feel about your mum You won't be afraid of her emotion about yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. You would have been able to actually speak with her more openly. What happened was you went, oh, oh, oh cry, oh, hold it together. Oh, and and she's feeling like, whoa, what's happening with Mr. Whitehead? You know. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I couldn't. That, that's you know. No. I, you yeah. know. You can't say tears. more yeah. uh, I just without to... certain things happening, right? Yeah. Yes. And um, yeah. It's and this not always what... ideal to you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what we believe, isn't it? Society believes it's not ideal for a teacher in front of five kids to have a cry. Good, good cry. Yeah. And yet that little girl yeah. needs to have, have a cry yeah. about not having a mum, you know. Yeah. And, um, and would have benefited knowing that there's someone in the world who has cares. compassion and cares for mm. that situation and also who feels the same. Oh, she could tell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She could tell. Because yeah. yeah. I think she thought, what's he getting so much? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And in fact, if, if, if you had engaged some of your emotion and allowed it, you would have also in that moment taught her that she can engage some of her emotion and, and mm. allow it. And, you know, like, it's likely that she's been shut down from experiencing the grief mm. of her mother's loss and of her father not being interested in her life. Mm. And, and, you know, your expression of that would have allowed her to, your, your feelings of that mm. for yourself would have in that perfect moment caused her to be able to say, oh, I'm allowed to have the same feeling. My mm. sadness is okay, it's valid, it's real, mm. it's something that, something yeah. did happen that was sad and hard for me. But, but of course society goes down the track of saying, no, that's not professional, you need to maintain this stoic, you know, mm. lack of contact, I suppose, emotionally with the, mm. with the person. And that then causes us to go into sort of rigidity trying to keep ourselves <laughs> under control. Yeah. And then we're teaching the child that whenever an emotion comes up, it has to go into rigidity and control. Mm. Uh, which is obviously the opposite thing that we'd really like to teach it if we were learning divine truth. So. Mm. Mm. I often um, recall myself as the rock, you know. I was such a rock when we met of like, hold it together. But I wanted to be this agent of change and empathy and service to the whole world. And I think about myself now as this rock just trying to help everyone so mm. rigid and hold it together and make everything better. And, and, and the, you know, the false belief is that this... this opening process, this really sensitive, grieving, completely open and soft and gentle person can't be an agent for change. And yet in your example that we just talked about, mm. it's life changing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes kids who've lost things, you know, they're mm. the things that carry them through huge. When they say there was this one person in my life who said, it's valid what you're worth feeling this or, you know, mm. that was a loss. You did suffer a loss mm. uh, when a lot of other people tell them that they, they honoured the truth. 
Yeah. And the mm. beauty of living in truth is you honour the truth. When you honour the truth, you're honouring their emotion, you're honouring their experience, you're honouring what's really happened. And as a result, any emotion that needs to flow can flow. And also any love that will flow as a result will flow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't honour the truth, it, like I keep saying, the, door, the doorway to love is truth. Like, you, can't, you can't have love without honouring truth. Mm. It's sort of like you can't have love for your childhood experience without honouring the truth of your childhood experience. Mm. And sometimes our childhood experience isn't as nice as what our parents would like to have believed it, has, mm. it, it was, you know. Uh, and so they tell us their truth or what they want us to believe about our childhood experience, but we're feeling quite differently at times. Mm. And, and if we honour it, and all I do in my presentations with people is honour it. Mm. And my honour of it from a soul perspective, not an intellectual state, my honour of their truth, of their life, causes them to connect with the emotion of the truth that they feel inside of them. Mm. Yeah.